I'm going to speak today about the challenges that we face when providing medical expertise, which include the vulnerable state of the people for whom we work, the alienating nature of asylum procedures, and the time frames imposed by the decision makers. The Helen Bamber Foundation was established to offer a service of physical, psychological, and social care to survivors of torture, as well as women and young people who've been trafficked for sexual exploitation, men and women who've been the victims of ethnic violence, extreme forms of domestic violence, including rape, victims of female genital mutilation and other forms of gross cruelty. The majority of our clients, of course, are asylum seekers and hopefully refugees to come. Many of the people with whom we are working have endured year after year of systematic abuse at the hands of trafficked of trusted others, as well as state or non-state persecutors. Furthermore, when a person has no legal representative, is destitute, or has just been released from detained fast track, where re-traumatization has inevitably occurred, the therapeutic process is inhibited. It is difficult for a person to engage in a therapeutic process when they are uncertain where they will be sleeping that night or when they fear further detainment. We see it as our role to provide the necessary care to stabilize initially and ensure the legal protection of that person and view this as a central part of the therapeutic process. In this latter respect, our clinicians provide reports on their findings of physical and psychological injury. Exposure in the asylum procedures is often accompanied by a sense of repeated violation, and there is often a polarity between wanting to remain silent or feeling obliged to speak without will. Evidence has emerged from the International Criminal Court regarding the potential therapeutic gains of giving testimony, but this is contingent upon the manner in which the testimony is received. When working with complex and relational trauma, disclosure of atrocity can only be made safe within the context of a therapeutic relationship. People who have endured great trauma and atrocity frequently speak of feeling subhuman. I'm not human anymore. I'm a shell. These are not words alone. Acts of trauma seek to strip a victim of humanity, of his own humanity, and of the humanity of others. I've often spoken about people who feel that they will contaminate the other, that if they tell what really happened to them, that we will recoil. And this is something that I learnt when I was working in Bergen-Belsen, um, which I did for two years with survivors of the Holocaust. And it was something that I began to understand two things. One is the need not to recoil, but to receive what you are being told, and also to be a witness, to be able to tell the story. And that is, in fact, what my organisation is about. We are there, in one way and another, to tell the story for people who very often have lost their voice and cannot speak. When survivors speak of trauma, of pain, of loss and grief, these are raw human emotions that do not reside in a vacuum. The manner in which the emotions attached to the experience is received is pivotal in the experience of a person who has suffered threat 
to personal integrity. It is not just the telling of the message, the narrative, but the way in which the message is received, by whom and for what purposes, that are capable of providing the essential rehumanizing experience. Humanity and validation of human experience are the starting points of reintegration into a world in which re-engagement with life and with others becomes possible. We work to a model of integration rather than cure. Part of a process of integration involves the trauma testimony becoming part of a person's life rather than their defining existence. And as such, the process of gathering information of clinical significance for a medical or psychological or psychiatric report has to be part of a much wider process and not a forensic examination alone. The prime purpose of our work is to explore the residing imprint that trauma has left on a person's life. When trauma has taken place within the context of relationships, the capacity for healing also lies within relationships. As such, our clinicians require time to establish a relationship in which trust can begin to be experienced and disclosure can start to feel therapeutic rather than violent. I go on to say that an environment needs to be created in which the survivor can gradually test the climate in which he or she can begin to speak of feelings with another who is able to receive more than the narrative alone. Now this can take many months, even years, in the case of extreme and prolonged trauma and is a, proce and is a process that is sometimes difficult to predict and should not be hurried. Our clinicians are frequently under considerable pressure to meet targets and time frames that are incompatible with what we see in the consulting room. The majority of the people we see are so severely traumatized that to try to force the process would inevitably result in compromising the integrity of the process to provide objective evidence. Time and skill on the part of the clinician is required in the building of trust that is so essential in order to unpack the experience of very damaged, often inarticulate individuals whose lives are filled with chaotic feelings and massive fear. In our view, it is only by building trust that we can obtain accurate information. Our reports focus on the relational impact of the trauma, reasons for delayed or late disclosures, which is always a big issue, as well as the minute and forensic detail of the trauma sustained. And our work frequently involves different members of a multidisciplinary team and their combined reports provide a multifaceted view of a person's physical and mental health. I want to give you, if I have time, I hope I have a little longer, um, two examples of complex trauma requiring long-term therapeutic interventions. And I think that through this you will understand what I've been trying to say so far. Miss A, who was born into a volatile, war-stricken African country, was referred to the Helen Bamber Foundation by her legal representative with a history of being trafficked to the UK for sexual exploitation. She's actually my, my patient. 